Hey guys, what's up here? Welcome back to another episode on our road to Master. I feel like I intro every single Road to Master video in the same tone of voice, so you probably know exactly what I'm going to say every single video. Today we're starting playing some Lee Dinger at Diamond Force, 62 LP, 7 LP off one of the most favourite things that I like to do with my girlfriend, because we like to go down to Highway 55 and eat dinner. Playing Lee Sing, guys. This is one of these champions who I really enjoy playing, but it's someone who I really kind of need to play well on, else you're terrible on him. So, uh, I, you know, one of these one of these guys who I'm a little bit hesitant to play. But this game, we just absolutely popped off. And hey, if I'm going to need to be climbing, these are the kind of plays I need to make. That delicious three-man kick here. I mean, look at my score. I'm 7-0-4, lads. 7-0-5 now. I, I'm, just, I'm just going crazy this game. These are the performances I need to get my uh, Lee Sin win rate back into the crazy tiers. Uh, but I'm too inconsistent on him, so it's kind of like, I see these gameplays and I'm like, yes, Lee Sin, I need to play more of him. But then I see my terrible gameplays and I'm like, oh shit. Game two of the day, boys and girls, Oriana Diamond Force 73 LP, and I'm against the Cassidy. Now Cassidy, quite flavor of the month right now, pretty strong, but I've never played versus him, so I don't really know how to play versus him. And uh, as you can see, my inexperience at playing Oriana in general and my inexperience of playing versus Cassidy means that I get pretty smashed and uh, blasted in this early lane phase. However, having said that, one of the reasons why I like playing Oriana is because you don't really need to do anything crazy in the lane phase. If you just farm up, you can uh, fill a more supporty role, anything like that. Uh, it also means that if you run through Singed Poison and take it like 70% of your health, uh, then it's okay because you can just come back later on into the game and uh, you're still useful. I really enjoy trying to go for those massive shock waves, but in general, when I'm on my uh, off roll, if I'm auto filled, picking something that can be a bit more supporty, that isn't difficult to play, it's nice because if you do muck up, then it's not the end of the world. And I'm really getting more comfortable playing Oriana and playing my off roll with plays like this. Like these are the kind of plays you need to make, guys. Look how happy I am about making that play, moving around the side of the tower there to pick some people off. So even though we had a kind of weak lane phase, we can still come back and be really useful and get some good shit going down, which is what you want to do when you're trying to win some League of Legends games, because the less you have to carry, the easier it can be. It's a bit ironic, though, me talking about how easy things can be to win League of Legends games when I then move into another Lee Sin game, Diamond for 90 LP. So this game gets off to a really kind of awkward start here where I get absolutely baited the crap out of by that Fiora. I'm sorry, you shouldn't blame teammates, but um, I was baited pretty hard. However, having said that, I also shouldn't have gone into that play, honestly, knowing that I would have to rely on my teammate. And there as well, again, another play where I thought we would have the 2v2, but we don't. That's not really my team's fault. I need to stop making those plays, honestly. And just looking at these, it's so easy to be like, oh, my teammate should have saved me. That's the reason why this is all happening and I can't win because my teammates suck. Uh, ultimately, like, don't put yourself in that situation. You know, if, if, I, if I'm looking back at this and I can say, yeah, that's pretty dumb. Don't put yourself in that situation. Uh, then just don't do it. You know, it's just, it's just not worth it. And it kind of all just snowballs out of that. I don't really have a great game here. Uh, not really looking at my minimap and relying too much on the crap plays. So I get punished for this one. Pretty justified. So coming off of a shaky game on one of these like inconsistent and difficult champions, Lee Sin, let's get cracking onto someone that's a lot easier to play. Someone I like to play a lot of actually, Gragas. So yes, very simple to play guys, we're trying to bring it back here. If I don't succeed on a uh, hard to play champion, let's try and succeed on an easy to play champion. So Gragas it is. And we get some nice stuff going in the early game, I talk about not doing dumb stuff because that's not what you want to... Uh, you know, don't want to rely on your teammates, you know, just think, use your brain a little bit more. But honestly, these plays, where's your brain? Where, where was my brain when I just died? Where's my play when I was setting up that play? It's just, it just really, you know, awkward, honestly. Uh, it's, again, I, I don't know, I, there's not really not much else to say than just I need to use my brain. But this was a really, really close game. Like, you can see all these team fights are crazy. I mean, that was a really nice stun there from the Syndra. Look at that barrel just to separate the two out of position, splitting one from the other. That's perfect. Isolating the target so you can pick them off one by one. All really good shit. Uh, but this is kind of like the Draven show this game. Uh, the enemy Draven got ridiculously fed. And we also didn't have a great performance coming out of our mid laner in the early game. But having said that, Syndra is the outplay button specialist. So if Draven gets too fed, Syndra presses R and it should be okay. But... Having said that, I mentioned about using your brain in plays and, uh, you know, sometimes you just don't 
it just doesn't switch on and then you do dumb stuff like I'm, I'm get i get kind of frustrated myself you can see my player cam down there because i know i shouldn't be doing this stuff you know just this weak misplays you know but still it's it's still kind of the draven show here so just throwing this is something i'm doing like more of on gragas just throwing my ult into like a crowd of people because even if it's not an amazing ultimate for displacing it's still useful and eventually despite the close game we pull it out of the back. So a nice close game there. Those are probably the most fun ones for me to play. And that's why I like picking someone like Gragas. Because, you know, you can... Uh, it's easier to play later on into the game. But we have a, an AD carry game here now. An AD carry game. Auto filled bot lane. And I'm playing Ash because Caitlyn was banned. I usually go to Caitlyn, but she was banned. So we're just going to be playing Ash instead. And we have a pretty good lane phase here, honestly. Like, I'm 1-1-1-1. One, one, and one. Uh, we were kind of dominating the enemy team a little bit in, in bot lane. I had more CS than Twitch as well. Uh, but then Blitz starts roaming because our team isn't doing particularly well. But the problem is there that it doesn't really change anything. This Jax got absolutely massive. Uh, and sadly, like the roams to try and help our lanes out didn't actually help our lanes out that well. Fire a volley backwards just for good luck. Uh, and then Jax is just an absolute monster. I'm playing an AD carry versus a, a monster Jax. It's not really one of the most fun experiences in League of Legends. Like, even here, I'm trying my best to just be a useful AD carry, but look at him! Just absolutely disgusting, and he's so tanky with that build. It's the, it's the Triforce Titanic Hydra build. The Koreans do it a lot. It's really bloody strong. Uh, but I, I mean, just so difficult to play versus him. I mean, my positioning isn't great like this. There's no, no reason for me to get jumped on by Jax and stunned while my flash is up. Uh, but I just can't, I just can't do anything like that. He, he just gets way too big, so sadly, can't win this one. It's all good though when you have an auto field game, if you can just like pull out some positives and just learn from those, that's really all you can expect. It's difficult to win auto field games. And we're playing some more Gragas today, around 70 LP back in Diamond 4. Uh, we're playing Gragas versus Zin. Now, I've, I've been mentioning kind of the theme of the video today is using your brain. Uh, this is, would be an example of a play where uh, I don't use my brain. Now, what I was thinking here was, you know, Victor pings that he's on his way, I think he's going to come and help me, so we're going to be good. Um, but what like what can he do honestly like, I should I should know that he can't do anything there You know just use your brain also uh, Syndra has a pretty big outplay button use your brain Foxy. She's gonna one-shot you so I, I got absolutely blasted by the Zin in the lane phase Like he was invading me a lot and we didn't really have the lane pressure to beat her as you can see here We're 14 minutes into the game and the enemy Yasuo top laner is 1v3 ing us So uh, that's pretty much just a good indication of how this game went down. I got destroyed in the, in the jungle by Zin uh, and my laners kind of got destroyed as well, and I can't help them because I, I'm getting I'm getting wrecked. So I turned my brain on in the early game to play around the Zin. Turn your brain on so that you don't get to a point where you can't help your laners. And games like this actually become winnable. But as it stands, like when you lose like every lane, you, you, we just have nothing going for us. I mean, it's 20 minutes into the game, and they're look at them. <laughs> it's over. Like honestly. Pretty depressing game. Best thing you can hope for when you have one depressing game is to have a better game next. So Diamond 4, 53 LP, we're playing some Vavik. Jungle Warwick is so bloody easy to play that when I'm having like a bad set of games, I just pick Warwick because it's not really too much you can go wrong with. I mean, look at this. It's busted. Two easy kills in the early game. Beautiful. Easy peasy. A lemon squeezy. My bot lane's asking for some help here. So I'm like, okay, I can go and help them out. Um, this isn't, I mean, this isn't strictly helping them. You know, I think that's actually kind of the opposite. One suicide there, that's not great. Uh, two is suicides, two suicides, yeah, that, that's pretty bad as well. But uh, I think we can do better than two. How about three? Yeah, three suicide gank attempts in bot lane. And for good luck, for good measure here, how about a fourth in the mid lane? God damn, I had such a great, like, level, like, first gank, and then terrible suicides after that. It was so, oh my goodness, like, awful. Just go going for terrible ganks all the time. So bad. Fortunately, though, this Xerath was an absolute beast this game. And Warwick, you don't really need to have any kind of strength. You don't really need to do anything special in the early game. Because you just become ridiculously tanky. And look at this, I chased her down half them. That's ridiculous. Warwick, mate, you're busted. You're way too OP. I mean, and ultimately, this is all I really need to do. I'm just a tank. I, I just, I fill out that role. Way too much damage there onto the Caitlyn as well, considering how tanky I am. And we managed to somehow pull out the win. Now, you can see by my webcam in the corner here uh, that I've, this is a new game. I figured my brain was pretty off since that last game. A good time to stop. Uh, we managed to get a nice cheeky start here onto the Jax, though. We followed him over the wall with his flash with our Q. However, something I didn't know about Jax and Warwick interaction 
his E blocks my Q. Um, so that was a really unfortunate, but a terrible start to the game. Use your brain, Foxy. Just turn your brain on. It's not that difficult. Apparently it is too difficult because constantly, consistently not putting this bloody thing in my head on. And it leads to all these terrible plays happening. It's, it's awful. Just If I just cut out my mistakes, I swear down I'd be like a 10 times better player. Um, but the story of this game really... Uh, it was kind of just like getting caught and then trying to like save like salvage the situation and then just making it worse like you'll see all these clips here when someone gets caught someone dies and then we try and make it happen we try and try and make it better and then it just gets 10 times worse i mean caitlin was really angry this game she was kind of trolling so you can see like this death i mean that was you know yeah whatever but it it, it doesn't matter like our reaction to these plays all the time it was just the same every single time People would get caught and then we'd try and stop it and we would just die again. And this just happened over and over and over and just really terrible, really. Uh, yeah, just like, just cut your losses, guys. In solo queue, just cut your losses. A nice uh, rage quit there from Caitlyn as well, but the game's pretty much over. And this clip sums it up. Can't even kill Jackson on 10 health, so a pretty depressing game again. So if the easy champions don't serve me well, Gragas and Warwick, we may as well stick to the one that I actually got some wins on, Lee Sin. So we're playing some Lee Sin. I actually forgot to record the early game here, but you can see I'm already 5, 1, and 1. 7, 1, and 1 now. 7 kill participation out of 8. Pretty good start to the game. Just popping off, going bonkers, going crazy. So, I mean, if it was this simple, you know, if it was this simple to win the early game, why didn't I do this earlier? All, all I had to do was, you know, kill everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'd snowball every single lane. That was literally it. I mean, it, 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 easy as pie, really, when you think about it that way. Just getting kills everywhere. Enemy Jarvan Jungle got absolutely blasted this game by me. I just ran all over him here. Uh, and I got some really kind of cute kicks off as well. So nice, nice initiations to the plays here. But you can see that I'm playing more smart. Like even when I jump in, I quite quickly jump back out again because I'm playing a very skirmish style like Lee Sin likes to do. I don't dedicate really hard to plays that are just terrible plays. And as such, I don't die all the time, which is a pretty big change from the past few games. And even when I jump in like this, that was a really nice kick to kind of kick Jarvan out and then like, uh, make the Lucian vulnerable there. So that was a nice one. We, we pick up the Lucian there as well. Uh, not the best Q, but you know, it's all just star points really. Bit of a crap kick here though, but it's okay because we pick him up anyway. Um, but really, like honestly, a nice bounce back game considering the past few games I've been absolutely boosted. Like genuinely terrible. Absolutely awful. I, I just, just really no brain. Just, just death really. That, that I guess that sums up my past few games quite nicely. So to have a game like this, Get my confidence back. Spank all over the enemy team. Nice little ladder in sec onto the Lucian here as well. Even though we don't kick him back into our team, we still CC him enough for our team to catch up. Which, generally speaking, is all you really got to do on Lee Sin. Plus, when you, got, when you get Guardian Angel on him, you can go ridiculously deep like you saw there. So, nice bounce back victory. And after building your confidence back with a nice jungle game, Diamond Force 72 LP. What a better way to kill the momentum and to get auto-filled into the AD carry role. Now, I had a pretty, pretty blinder start to this game here, guys. I mean, my CSing was terrible. My early lane mechanics were terrible. Nice little Q, <laughs> Q miss montage here. Pretty garbage, but uh, still, um, Caitlyn, I'm quite comf uh, comfortable on, quite confident playing her. So even if we have some a uh, bad start, it's, it's not too bad, really. She's a pretty strong pick overall as well. And I was fortunate enough to have quite a nice support this game. Who managed to set up plays for me and, and was really nice. Um, however, there aren't too many things you can do against the outplay queen that is Syndra. So when she comes roaming down, that's a bit of a pickle. When Kadzix comes roaming, roaming down, we're a bit of a pickle there as well. And this has to be the worst play of the game here. This one kind of tilted me a little bit. It's like, yo, we're winning this bot lane so bloody hard. Why would you force this play? We just get wiped here. We lose everything. Absolutely terrible. Really annoying that one when you set everything up to be really good and then it just gets absolutely wrecked. And look how fed that Cinder is now. Just like, god damn, this game is going to be so bloody hard. Really weak heal here as well. Kind of baited Oriana there. Probably could have saved her. But we are Caitlyn and we can do Caitlyn things. So hopefully, with that in mind, we might be able to pull something out. But this is what you got to do, guys. When you're behind on AD carry, when you're behind on someone, just farm up. Farm up for the late game. I've been doing this a lot more now. Don't, you know, just ignore the fact I missed the cannon. Farm up and then play for later on into the game. Don't just keep fighting the enemy team when you're already weaker than them. Farm it out, boys. 
make it a bit better for you. And you can see things are starting to look a little bit up here as well. I was thinking I would get a nice cheeky outplay onto the Syndra there as well, but my headshot doesn't quite kill her. Should have flashed the stun in hindsight, but uh, at least the attempt was there, so I kind of respect myself for that one. And as it turns out, we managed to kind of pull the game around a little bit here. Nidalee actually becomes like a really hard carry for us. Oriana as well. Nidalee and Ori both played really well this game. And I basically just did Caitlyn things. Like, I, I didn't have to do too much. I just right-click people. I mean, you can see you, you can see the intense mechanics going down here. Where I literally just right-click people and just kill them. I mean, once you get three rounds on Caitlyn, that's pretty much how it goes down anyway. So, bit of a like, good start. Really awkward kind of transition to mid-game. Uh, but we managed to pull it out uh, later on. Easy peasy. So we're ending today's video off at Diamond 4, 91 LP. Not too bad, very close to our Diamond 3 promo. So hopefully we can get that going next time. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out some of my other videos. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day, and I will see you in my next video.